Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as always to Shri Prabhupada. Welcome to boys to Morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be continuing with Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse 34. And the chapter is entitled, The Punishment and Reward of Kali. We are in the middle of the discussion where Maharaj Prichit frees Kali, um, knowing that uh, he is a troublemaker, but he's freeing him so that he doesn't corrupt the state and he gives all his reasons and we're getting right into that beautiful discussion. We're happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as all glories to you and all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Thank you. And it's all yours, Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nismin Hare Bhagavan Ijamaham. Yatma Nortin Yatitam Santamiti Satam Norti. Saman Namo Dham Stiru Jal Vamanam Natu Bahudaya. Viva Isa Translation. In the sacrificial ceremony, although sometimes a demigod is worshipped, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is worshipped because he is the secret soul of everyone and exists both inside and outside like the earth. Thus, he is, thus it is he only who awards award welfare to the worshipper. Report. It is even sometimes seen that demigods like Indra and Chandra are worshipped and offered sacrificial awards. Yet the awards of all such sacrifices are awarded to the worshipper by the Supreme Lord. It is the Lord only who can offer all welfare to the worshipper. Demigods are worshipped do not do anything without the sanction of the Lord because the Lord is the super soul of everyone both moving and non-moving. In the Bible, the Gita 923, the Lord himself confirms his power. Whatever a man may sacrifice to other gods or some Kundi is really meant for me alone. It is offered without true understanding. The fact is that the Supreme Lord is one without a second. <clears throat> no God other than the Lord Himself. Thus, the Supreme Lord is eternally transcendent in the creation. But there are many who worship the demigods, like the sun, the moon, and Indra, who are only material representation, representatives of the Supreme Lord. These demigods are in direct qualitative representations of the Supreme Lord. A learned scholar or devotee, however, knows who is who. Therefore, he directly worships the Supreme Lord and is not diverted by the material qualitative representations. Those who are not so learned worship such qualitative material representations, but the worship is unceremonious because it is irregular. In the Jarkin and Amrasyan, in the Jarkin Sadhvaitamsa <laughs> Vipa Sindhu Peva Chapadita Nam Pavani Gil Vaisna Be Gil Namaham Namaha Daisi Krishna Te Tanya Sadhu Nitya Nanda Sri Advaita Gada Hari Sri Gana Sri Gora Bhakti Gundi Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare
stone. There were different types of worships that mentioned in the Vedas. And for those who have who are materially attached and are unable to understand and appreciate or worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in order to keep them within the realm of Vedic confinements or Vedic principles, uh, one can worship the Lord in a less direct way by worshiping the demigods. And the demigods cannot give bhakti because they are also within the realm of material existence. The various demigods or universal controllers, they have power, and many of them are great devotees of the Lord. But they are still inclined to material desires. And but those who but there is recommendations in Shastras, Kamakana, Gyanakana, in other words, for material upliftment, material desires, or even some higher stage of spiritual position in order for worship to come to an to a, a more elevated stage of worship. So these are demigods. And we have Indra, Chandra, Surya, Bayu, Ganesh, and the Durga. And people who are inclined to material uh, success, uh, they worship the demigods. <laughs> but here it's said, that whatever the only gods can be stopped through the worshiper comes from the Supreme Lord himself. But then Krishna also says that the demigods, whatever the demigods give is temporary. They cannot give anything internal. And so those who worship, they get they may get some material success, some material fulfillment, but after some time, due to the nature of worship. That means it is relative to the worshiper, and uh, it depends on what people are worshiping. People worship for good health. People worship for peace of mind. People worship for good family. Just like in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the very beginning of the second canto, I believe it's the third chapter, where it describes the there is a whole series of devas that one can worship and get particular benefit from that worship. There's one from the Pujapatis for successful family, right? One can worship in, in, uh, Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva, to get a good wife. Um, one can worship Shiva to get fame. One can worship uh, so many demigods and the goddesses are listed. But then, as the verse describes the different types of benefits that the different types of uh, demigods, you know, it says, Kama Sarva Kama Vam Moksha Kama Ibaradu, Ivraina Bhakti Yoga Nia Jaita Puddha Purusam Tadam. And that is that. Whether you have more material desires, whether you have no material desires, or whether you are uh, uh, fixed on the transcendental platform, still one should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So all types of worshipers are recommended to worship the Supreme Lord. But there are a class of people who will not be that for whatever reason. Um, they, they sometimes they think, oh, if you worship Krishna, Krishna takes away all your, your material success. He destroys your material desires. And that is generally true for those who seriously worship Krishna in devotion. But they want Krishna, they don't want anything material. And so they are giving fulfillment of their spiritual uh, success. In other words, in making progress towards the goal of life. 
but there is a class of people who worship the Thunderbolt. And the Vedic system, there are so many rules, regulations, forms of worship for the Devas, but they're all temporary. Those who want success in business or in material life can worship Ganesh. Uh, those who want uh, uh, destruction of their enemy, they can worship Durga. And so there's different forms of uh, worship. Okay. So this is, uh, but here, it's mentioned that uh, that ultimately everything goes to Krishna because whatever the demigods can give is automatically bestowed by Krishna. So why waste time worshiping the demigods? The people say, well, can we worship Krishna for material desires? Yes, you can, but doesn't mean that you'll get it. You may get that material desire, or you may get something better than that. In other words, sometimes Krishna, those who worship Krishna for material desires, he gives them something better. He situates them in devotional service. Uh, I was just reading this the other day, how even sinful people who hear and chant the glories of the Lord uh, just out of curiosity or for some material gain, although they're not qualified, they have no desire for bhakti, um, they're coming for other reasons, much are materially oriented. Still, they get some benefit because they're in the house of Veda. So the Vedas are like that, to keep the living entity within the confines of authorized forms of worship. They sanction lower forms of worship so people don't uh, just go for their material desire without any form of worship. Because when you understand that whatever you get in life is coming from higher power. Uh, unfor not unfortunately, but naturally, it is, of course, unfortunately also. In the Western society, people just go for their material desires. They don't perform any kind of worship, any kind of puja. They think if I want to get money, I just have to be intelligent enough to figure out how to get it. If I want to get a nice position in in society or some nice um, you know, you know, nice relationships in this world, I just have to understand how to go about it. But that implicates them in sinful life. So people who stay within the house of data and worship the Davis or higher beings for material desires get purified eventually of their material desires and have a chance to actually come to the real goal of life, bhakti. So therefore, the house of Veda allows them. Just like sometimes you see in Vedic society, there's a class of men who are not satisfied with um, their wife. So they go around looking for other women. So in, other, so in the Vedic culture, in order not, not to pollute other women by such, such licentious men, uh, the society will establish a house of prostitution. And then right that way, these men can go there and not pollute innocent ladies with their desires. So there, it's, it's concessionary. And the whole thing is concessionary. But here, just to make a point, it says that ultimately, the personality of Godhead is worship. Because behind everything is Krishna. Behind everything is Krishna. So those who are intelligent, well, even if they have material desires, they'll worship Krishna for material desires. Those who are unintelligent will go to will go to the material desires of any practical form of worship. And therefore they commit sinful activities. So the Vedas are very merciful to keep people from uh, going down in their material life to connect them with material life in an authorized way, which it gradually purifies them. 
Um, I think there's a nice, uh, there's that example. You know, I think it was it's in the shops. Um, slip my mind on it. I can't think of it. Maybe it'll come up later. Um, yeah, well, when we understand, ultimately, everything is coming from Krishna. I'll just worship Krishna. That's it. <laughs> but uh, Krishna allows, or the Vedic culture elevates people to different forms of worship by keeping them connected to an authorized form of activity for the human society. But anyone who is worshiping the demigod, that is called Rita Gyan. Rita means uh, disturbed or deficient. And Gyan means, in this case, intelligence. That the minds are, de are, are crippled, they're crippled minded. So those who actually want success in life can worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, I think to illustrate this point, um, go to the uh, uh, go to the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, third I think it's third chapter at the very beginning. Yeah. Okay, here it is, verses two through seven. Mara, shall I open it or do you want to just read it from here? Yeah, go ahead and open it. Okay. Yeah. It's a long one who desires to be absorbed in the impersonal Brahma Jani should worship the personified Vedas like Rama, the Hospital. One who desires powerful sex should worship the heavenly king Undra. One who desires good progeny should worship the great progenitor or the progenitor. And it just goes on and on and on. I didn't read all of them. And then those, if one desires good marital relationships, she should worship the taste goddess Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. Then if you go down the page to the next verse, you know, go to the next verse. And it goes on, one who worships Lord Vishnu, who is devotee, who is pure in the you know. So, so it's, it continues to go on, giving various types of uh, uh, worship that are mentioned in the Vedas. But if you come to verse 10, I think it's 10, which is the next verse, I think. And now it is the next one. Yeah, one who desires the, you know, you know, one who, and so verse 10 is actually the answer. But a person who has broader intelligence, whether he be full of material desire, Without any material desire, desire and liberation, must by all means worship the supreme whole the personality of God. So after stating all of these different worshipers and the benefits they give, it kind of rejects the whole idea and says, other people they have they're hurt the gown, their intelligence is not new. Because whatever the demigods can give through the forms of worship that are offering, it's temporary. It's limited. But one who has good intelligence, sume the sama, not alpha name, so alpha, alpha means meager intelligence. But here, sume the means that even though we're full of material desires, free from all material desire, desire liberation, one should worship the Supreme Personality of God. And that way, one will make progress to the goal of life. Yeah. And and many times, Krishna, even if a person has material desires and they worship the Supreme Lord, Krishna may, may fulfill those material desires just to allow that person to continue on in bhakti. But after, as they learn more about the benefits of bhakti and how bhakti is superior to any form of material success or desire, they gradually give it up when they after some time they give up 
these smaller desires, and they actually take to the process of bhakti. So it's a way to get these people who are not understanding the position of the world, who still have material desire, but are following the authorized process for fulfillment, to get them to the into the path of that, and they materially they can worship the demigods and gradually purify themselves and come to the understanding, hey, that whatever the is coming from me alone. <laughs> so why not worship the, the person who is the source of the demigods? He says, Ahamadi Devaram, Krishna I am the source of the demigods. Whatever the demigods can give. Is coming for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one who's actually intelligent will understand that material desires do not fulfill one's desire for happiness. Only when one takes to the process of bhakti, devotional service. And you see in the Vedic culture, there are so many uh, ceremonies, there are so many uh, festivals. For worshiping Durga, for worshiping Ganesh, worshiping various demigods, uh, Surya, Vihaspati, uh, who else? The ones that are more common worshippers. Uh, um, people worship people worship certain demigods in order to get some kind of family protection. Women worship demigods so their husbands are protected. Women women worship demigods so they can get some protection for their children. But it's, this worship is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. It's not just because you worship the demigods doesn't mean you're going to get the results of your worship. Because if Krishna says to the demigods, don't give that person that desire, then the demigod can't do anything. So he's not independent. As it says in this in the verse that we were discussing, that Krishna sits in the heart of all of the entities at super soul, and he's controlling everything in his uh, manifestation as super soul in the hearts. Just like if you think of something and uh, you want to fulfill that. If Krishna doesn't want that to be fulfilled, he'll do something to divert your attention away from that or to frustrate the results of your activity. But just, uh, Krishna is the supreme control. Everything comes from him. He is the beginning, the middle, the end. He is the ingredient. He is the worship. He is the result. He is the endeavor. All of these activities that make up both spiritual and material activities are all connected directly to Krishna through various energies. So ultimately, the goal is to come to worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is the natural incarnation of the soul's existence. And that's what that verse is all about. <laughs> Take the Krishna concept. <laughs> well, you might say, well, uh, yeah, I'm a devotee. Where are you? What do you want? If you want peace, happiness, material success from your devotional worship, you're actually worshiping Krishna indirectly. But if you want the goal of bhakti, then you are actually worshiping Krishna. So what is the goal of bhakti? Prema Kumar and Mahan. To come to the stage of developing one's natural loving service to the Lord. In other words, to love Krishna. Out of all of the activities of the conditioned soul, the highest of activity is Prema Kumar and Mahan. To love the Supreme Lord. And it's called Purusharta Siromani. Siromani means crushed jewel, the best of all valuable jewels. And Purusharta is the activities of the 
of the conditioned sorrows in this world. So out of all of the Puru Shakas, Arkatama Dhamma Moksha, Bhakti is what is the soul's uh, success. Otherwise, even liberation mm, causes one to again endeavor for a higher stage of development. And of course, liberation most of the time is temporary, and one can will slow down again from liberation back into the material realm, into the mode of goodness, or maybe even lower, depending, and then have to struggle again to attain some kind of footing, either in the material world. So why waste time? If everything is centered around Krishna, where is it Krishna? Because <laughs> Krishna is everything. Okay. Thank you so much, Marge. Amazing, powerful, powerful points. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I want to book and I will, and I would like to request devotees to please um, do uh, turn on your camera if you can. Sri Devi, you are ahead of me. Go right ahead, Mataji. <laughs> you are muted. Okay, I there you go. Dear uh, Guru Maharaj, thank you for this wonderful class. So supposing one desires that I really want to go back to Krishna, I want to play with Krishna, I want to be with Krishna, I want to be, you know, part of his uh, pastimes in the spiritual world. Is that asking for uh, one of the muktis of being with uh, in association with the Lord? And would that be considered liberation? Or would that be considered wanting to go back to Godhead? Well, in order to do that, you have to qualify yourself. You can't just say, I want to I want to do all of those things. You have to qualify it. You have to come to the state of pure devotion and service. That's fine. But then qualify yourself to, to reach that state. Okay. You can't just say, I want to, and then just because you have that desire, it's going to happen. You've got you to qualify yourself. You have to come up to the standard of pure devotional service if you want to play with Krishna in the spiritual world as a cowherd boy or as a, as a gopi or whatever, a resident of Vrindavan as a gallery. You have to follow the process in order to reach that stage of purification. That's fine. But you know, that desire is good. But ultimately qualify yourself. Is that that, considered, yeah, so I want to be. Yeah, I want to be. Uh, I want to be a professor in a law college. That's very nice. But then you got to go to law school, and then you have to pass all the exams, and then you have to go through your bar exam, and then you have to work as a as an apprentice lawyer for, for some time before you can actually get elevated to a, a position. So yeah, qualify yourself. <laughs> So that wouldn't be considered one of the forms of uh, liberation to want to have the same body as the Lord. Uh, it won't be considered that we are trying to get to liberation rather than pure loving devotional service to Krishna in that way. We want to go back home, back to God and play with Krishna. That's not liberation. That's the, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sarupya, having the same form as the Lord, is considered one form of liberation, right? Sarupya, so, yeah. But if you, if you want that, you know, people who fall short of, of pure devotional service but are, are have reached a high state of perfection can attain these different stages of liberation. Sarupya so, is one. But... You can't, uh, that is given to you by the Lord it's through your own process, power of devotion and service. Even demons, there's one demon who got Sri Mukti. That was Agasura, Agasura got it, Sri Mukti. He was a demon. So, what I'm trying to say, Guru Maharaj, is how do we uh, distinguish between going back to Godhead and Sarupya Mukti. It's based on your desire. You want to go back to Godhead, then follow the process. 
Mm. It's exclusive. It's not within the realm of uh, liberation. So when we say, I want to go back to Godhead, we are just trying to get back our original constitutional position, whatever that may be, without yeah. trying to make any um, specific endeavor to get into this form or that form. Just qualify yourself. That's the answer. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Whatever you want. Probably, there is a way to achieve whatever you want. But each has a qualification. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Marge. Nice question, Sri Devi. Yes, uh, Sulfesh Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances for Guru Shri Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, you mentioned today that even if somebody worships the demigods, at least they're still under the Vedic system. Now, yesterday when you were doing a Japa workshop, if I heard or understood correctly, one of the offenses, I think, was not to blasphemy scriptures. And I think you said that even if somebody is following another religion, they may have their own scriptures. And um, we shouldn't, like, you know, make offenses towards their scriptures. Did I understand that correct? correctly? Yeah, and the, the charyas give that one should, one should understand that all the spiritual practices, you know, no matter what level of practice they're on, it's been authorized by the Supreme Lord for a certain class of people. That's all. Just like the Buddha, what did Buddha do? Buddha simply came to teach Ahimsa. People were um, people were in the name of Vedic sacrifices, killing animals surreptitiously. The Buddha, in order to protect the animals. And being on a, uh, uh, you know, slaughtered like him, he came and he said, "Forget about your Vedas, just worship me, just follow the eightfold process of mystic yoga." So he's the supreme lord. Buddha is actually an incarnation of Krishna, but he's not teaching bhakti. He's teaching you know this this lower stage of worship just to get people to become nonviolent. Sankaracharya, he threw out Buddhism and brought people back on the Vedas. But he was teaching monism, that the absolute truth is one, rather than one and different. So there are different levels of worship. You might say some of the other Western religions, they have a, that God is the Father, He is the Creator. And we should obey God and follow our the process given to us by our our teachers. And then we can go back to you know heaven. So uh, yeah, there are different levels of worship. There is one extensive purport, it's in the fourth canto, where it says that one should not find fault with other religious practices. Because each each practice has its uh, a particular um, level of worship that's being taught. Now, what people think is that all the all spiritual practices are equal. No, they're not. But we don't find fault. You can't say, "Well, you know, uh, I'm in college, and therefore everybody should be in college." You have to go to, you know, the lower grades to get up to that level of college. So not everyone can jump up and ultimately work as a worship the Supreme Personality of God. And so there's different levels that are given for different classes of men within the different modes of material nature. Therefore, when we're preaching Krishna consciousness, we need to understand that person's religion and where they're at rather than thinking we know better? Well, we can explain the, the essence of the principles of religion is to, uh, is to love God. If, you're, if your practice of religion is not giving you love of God, then you should understand 
what it means, what what you have to do. So ultimately, um, we don't have to understand what other people are at. We talk about the general principle. Just like Ahimsa, thou shalt not kill. So that is a standard religious principle. It cuts across all, you know, sectarian lines. So we say, yeah, how can you actually authorize the killing of animals within the, within the, uh, and the confines of religious worship. So sometimes, you know, Prabhupada, and Prabhupada would preach to the Christians. He would say the same thing all over and over again. Why are you killing animals? Why are you eating meat? When the principle is down, showing up to He never talked about higher religious principles. Simply God talked about where they were deficient on their own level of practice. Just like in any scripture, it talks about glorifying God. In the scripture, in the Krishna scriptures, it says, um, uh, "Worship Him with, uh, with what is it? Um, how's it done? With trumpets, with bugles, with horns and drums." Uh, in other words, it talks about worship of the Lord in different ways. In different religious scriptures. So we we also sometimes say, yeah, the scriptures also talk about just worship God. But don't worship God for something material, worship him to please him by your worship. Right? Thank you. Okay. That was a nice question, too. Thank you, Silfresh Prabhu. Yes, Raj Prabhu, please go ahead. Uh, what should our approach be? Sometimes we forget. Ma, uh, Raj Prabhu, can you increase your volume? Maharaj can't get your voice clear. Sometimes we go to programs and we see and they need devotees and they they very proudly declare that they are a follower of such and such and they'll name uh, such and such demigod and they're there you sense that they're expecting some praise or recognition for it and of course we want to use that enthusiasm to help engage them and attract them in Krishna consciousness. So what should our approach be? Well, why should you worry about everybody else? <laughs> because we want to we want to engage them in Krishna consciousness because it's like their first visit or something. Well, yeah. Better to preach to people who are looking for God, those who think they have it, you know, why waste time with them? <laughs> unless they come to you, unless they're asking you for questions, unless they're, they're curious about to know something better, something higher, or they, unless they want to understand a little bit more about their own notion. Why should you worry about trying to preach to them? They come to you, fine. Well, we don't worry about it. Yeah, we go on. Uh, we're out there to give to the people who are looking, who are seeking, who are suffering, who want something better. So if someone is you know, fixed in their own ideas, then, yeah, what can you do? You just waste your time in argument. I feel that there must be some sense of desire for in of interest because they've come to a function or a, a festival or something or the temple they've come to that that Hare Krishna event because of a reason well yeah you see that the Hindu diaspora is full of them, varieties of mentalities of different types of worship and ideas 
Can't just give people a chant Hare Krishna, right? Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Just invite them to take part in devotional service. Right? The process will do the work. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. Any questions from devotees? Anything that's coming to mind? This is a very, you know, deep, powerful class. Marge, I have a question. Now. In the in your class, you mentioned Marge, uh, um, demigods cannot give bhakti. And at the same time, I've heard um, devotees say that when we approach a demigod or we see a demigod or you know family events or whatever that we should pray for bhakti well they can't give you bhakti but they can help you in your bhakti anybody can help you sometimes you ask him the your uh, fellow god brother god sister you know pray for me help me give me some mercy that's just natural I mean, they can't give you bhakti, but because they're more powerful and they're also devotees, they can uh, they can they can uh, pray to the Lord for you too to give you mercy. Just like we play to the spiritual master, he's a representative. We can pray to anybody for mercy. <laughs> Mercy means something that help, that helps us to elevate our consciousness towards bhakti. Give me good association. Free me from my my desires to enjoy material life. You can pray. You can pray to different personalities. They can't. They can't give you the results. But they can help you if they're if they're powerful enough. Mm -hmm. Thank you, March. Namrata Mataji, go ahead. Hi, Krishna. My humble obeisance is all glories to Shri Prabhupada. So, just following up on what Mataji said. Uh, sorry, not Mataji, uh, Raj Prabhu said uh, about demigods that uh, since uh, in India, uh, demigod is like, you can see everywhere demigod worship. So is it a good idea that uh, if we uh, give them higher purpose in their uh, demigod worship, like uh, just recently there was a Ganesha festival. Uh, so uh, the worshipping lord of Lord Ganesha is Narshimadev. So if we uh, tell them that uh, Lord Narshima, we should offer food to Narshimadev first, uh, the boga to Narshimadev first, and then if we uh, offer it to uh, Ganesha, then he'll be more happier. And we should pray that uh, uh, to give us spiritual relief or remove our spiritual uh, obstacles. So that sort of worship is okay. I think her camera kind of Hare froze. Krishna. Okay, Marge, I, I think she's done with her question. A am I audible? Uh, Actually, you are. Am, I, am I audible properly? kind of because you're going in and out but your picture your video just froze so we don't know what if that's been that's affecting your your voice no she's a, I, I couldn't understand okay. the whole, I just couldn't understand the question mm -hmm. okay I'll turn my video off for a second just for the question sake yeah okay. am I audible now properly yes can you repeat your question again Mati? Yes, okay. Uh, so in India, since demigod worship is like very prominent, uh, 
so giving an example of ganesha festival which is just recently which was just recent so can we have higher purpose uh, to demigod worshiper like uh, uh, the ganesha the worshiping of lord ganesha is narsimha dev so if we say that uh, lord narsimha dev or uh, whatever uh, powers ganesha lord ganesha gets is from narsimha dev so we should offer uh, prasadam first to narsimha dev and then to lord ganesha and then we should accept it and then we should ask them to uh, uh, make you know they they always keep asking to demigod so uh, uh, please help us remove our uh, spiritual obstacles and those sort of things uh, are these kind of things encouraged No. <laughs> the idea is that, as he mentions in the the uh, nectar of devotion, that Nishri, uh, Ganesha removes obstacles in devotion and service. But the Acharyas also say that we uh, we don't have to worship Ganesh to remove obstacles because Ganesha is power from the Shri Devi, and we have authorized worship of Lord the Shri Devi. So we don't worship Lord Nishringadev to remove obstacles. We worship our Lord Nishringadev as the supreme, supreme personality of Godhead. So, the, and if we, if, if the Lord is pleased, then you know, they'll remove obstacles. Now, that's a material. That's a material type of worship. Right? Okay, thank you for the clarification. Just worship the Lord in devotion, and everything will be fine. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> you don't have to ask him to do all these different things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my Lord. There's three, you know, but the worship of Lord Nishrina Day brings three forms of benefits. One, uh, as Pralad Maharaj describes. In one verse in the fifth canto, that he removes material desires from the heart, you know, fruit of activities. Two, he destroys material illusions. Three, he gives protection from material dangers. So, so this worship of the Lord in devotion, he knows what he's supposed to do. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you for that. That clarifies. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we pray that when we want to chant Japa, we want to get free from uh, distraction. So we play. We pray to uh, Shri Hari Das Thakur. We pray to Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur also to help us chant attentively. I mean, that's fine. Hmm. It's sad, Gumaraj. Uh, when we are in India, it's it, it's very difficult to make people understand because there's a lot of uh, demigod worship around. So I was just thinking, can we use this as higher purpose? Yeah, you can. You can use that for them, not for yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Just tell them to worship the Shringa Dave instead of Ganesh. Because whatever Ganesh can give is coming from the Shringa Dave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maharaj, can you repeat that three points? I missed that the last point, Maharaj. You said... Uh, Three things that Lord Nishinga removes: removes material desire, material pollution, and I missed the third one, Marge. Yeah, he protects against material danger. <sighs> the world Thank is a dangerous place. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Marge, there is an anonymous question here that I have to read out to you. 
And that is, uh, what should we do when we get invited to participate in festivals or home programs for demigods? What should be our mood without making any offense towards demigods and the invite and the host? Well, you don't want to go, but you want to be polite. Is that the idea? Yes, Marge. Want to go, but don't want to. Yes, <laughs> but you know, don't want to go, but have to be polite. At, and I think at the same time, how to cultivate them on a long process to Krishna consciousness. That's a kitchen, Marge. Oh, so how how do we? What should be our mood? Invite them to come to the temple. <laughs> to Kirtan. Then it, I'm sorry, Mark. If, if you want, if you want to go to these things, you can go and say them. And then you say, "Now I came to your program. Now come to my program." As long as you don't get uh, attracted to their program, that's also dangerous. I've seen that that when in a compromised program, sometimes devotees get a little enamored by all the glitter. If you're going to do bridge preaching, you better not fall into the water. <laughs> Marge, I think that is the key point because we have to protect ourselves. So, Marge, so it's so if we were to go in the mood of service, we should be strong enough not to get pulled down and then be yeah, invited yeah. to the temple. The forms of these different worshippers are very attractive. They make a very ostentatious way of doing everything to attract the worshiper. And so the forms are really very colorful, uh, interesting. And there's so many rituals. And people will even get caught up in, in thinking that this is actually beneficial. Mars, the second question to this, the second part to this anonymous question, Mars, is when others in the community see certain devotees going to this program out of politeness and, you know, whatever, it gives a mixed idea, you know, mixed conception. Should we bother about it? Should we, I mean, yeah, how do we deal with that, Marge? It's interesting. I'm here in Ujjain. Uh, and uh, today is the inauguration of a huge statue of uh, Shankar. It's about two-hour drive from New Zealand. So, and this is being uh, this is being uh, uh, authorized by many of the big dignitaries, politicians, by people who have big positions. You can see the picture of this huge form of, of Shankar. So 15 of our devotees went to the program today. They left this morning. Just so we can, you know, uh, connect these people ultimately to us. It was a preaching tactic. So 15 brahmacharis and one sannyasi also. also Uh, it's a big ceremony. It's probably going on right now. It's coming to its conclusion. It's been going on all day. So, uh, yeah, we went in order to, uh, of course, devotees think, well, Shankar, he's actually Lord Shiva anyway. <laughs> so, Vaishnava Yuta Shambhu. But they're not going to worship. We're simply going to go as representatives of the Hare Krishna movement. And then that will attract more and more people. Just like Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj set up this temple here in the Ujjain. Huge temple, grand temple. Uh, worship of the deities, Madame Mohan, 
Krishna Balaram, Jagannath Balaram, Subhadra, Gornitai, Mishra Day, and beautiful verses. And uh, this is uh, Ujjain, is a place of uh, Shiva. Shiva worship is really strong here. Mm -hmm. There's one deity called Mahakal. He's very popular. Uh, when I was coming in from, uh, from Delhi, and I was being uh, escorted by one of the workers in the Delhi airport. He asked me, where are you going? I said, Ujjain. He said, oh, Mahakal. <laughs> Everybody knows about Mahakal. <laughs> but yeah, so this place is this saturated with Chiba worship. And people come from all over. So I'm in the temple. And people are coming into our temple. As one of the uh, uh, pilgrimage places that they come. They come to see Lord Shiva or some form of worship here. And then, so Maharaj was really intelligent. He had three or four options where he could have opened the temple. But he took this place because it's a pilgrimage place for many people who are demigod worshippers. It's a big demigod worship place where I am right now. But people are coming and they're dancing. Chanting, getting Kshadam, and doing Darshan of the Supreme Personality of God, becoming purified. So, Marge, in the mood of representing or going in the mood of supporting as representatives of the Hare Krishna movement and not getting sucked in, into their, lack of a better word, into their mode of worship is all right. It's well, I mean, the person, the, not everybody can do that. That's what I'm saying. It's, not everybody can do that. They have to be strong in their own Krishna consciousness. Yeah. yeah. Marge, as you were speaking, I was remembering a situation that happened here in Harrisburg. I think it was in 2018. When we first became ISKCON, of, you know, un under ISKCON, and um, I had to do some what, uh, sacrifice, I think is a better word, <laughs> to attend few people's, uh, which I never heard of it, Marge, before, never heard of it. It's something called uh, Golu, I, I think, or something like that. I've never done it in my life because I was raised Christian. I never heard it. So I had to go just to give support. And I and it was so draining. Marge, I had to do like one home every day for seven days. And I said, I'll never do it again. So next day they they call me. I just said, no, 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 because I can't do it. It was too much. All they do is just, you know, like you said, Marge, you know, gossip, all the women, you know, it's actually women, women. They gossip and they glitter and they showcase and they eat. It's a party. Yes. <laughs> I did it for one year just to kind of see if I can pull them back to the temple. It never worked. Then next year I said, no time. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> I can't do this. Yeah, you tried. <laughs> yes, Marge, I tried. I don't know if I failed, but I tried because I, <laughs> it was too much for me. As long as you're with us, we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Marge. This every evening parties in people's homes is, oh, my Krishna Chaitanya. Yes, Sri Devi, please go ahead, Mataji. Actually, what you're describing, Golu, is the celebration of Padmavati and Balaji's marriage, Navratri. And it is done in all South Indian homes. My mother did it every year. And it's actually celebrating the Supreme Lord's marriage. And that whole festival is based on that. But it has deteriorated like everything else. And now it's all about just partying and everything, but that wasn't the origin. Just wanting you to know that it is. Devi, thank you for sharing light because I I did not see a drop of that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Yeah, that's what generally happens nowadays. I but... did not see not even the size of a mustard seed, as we say. I did not see that, and I was so drained. I just came. I I, I didn't see a drop of that. Sad to say. It is done with great love and devotion. And all that go to the steps with all the decorations and everything is for the pleasure of the Lord. It is his marriage. And so all the demigods, all the sages like that, they have different roles on the different steps. And all the village people. So that's how the different dolls are arranged. 
and actually it is to celebrate the uh, festival of balaji marrying padmavati tirupati balaji venkateshwara i oh that just by you describing it is so powerful because what i i i i went to one home and they did it in a star wars star wars i'm not joking and i said what am i coming to like it didn't make you know like i said i was raised christian right so i don't yeah it it was you know yeah. one side was yeah mm -hmm. one side was star wars another house had barbie dolls you know i said what is it happening it deteriorated so much that now so bad. yeah so i, I just said i'll just stick to the holy name i'm i'm happy there now let me just perfect that which i haven't yet so i'll just act for mercy on that got it <laughs> yeah but it's really sad Prabhu, really really sad thank you i thank you for shedding some light on that because it was it is definitely deteriorating i have to say that definitely um there is a comment here by uh Saurabh. i'm going to read that had krishna mark please accept my humble obeisances jay show Prabhupada Kija. i saw you dancing ecstatically at the Prabhupada memory festival I was also hearing glories of His Holiness Bhakti Chira Swami Maharaj and Shiv Prabhupada. Oh, nice, nice. The one at Ujjain? So, Rob, he, he's a resident of Ujjain. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, sort of is saying that he saw you dancing aesthetically at the, at the Prabhupada Memory Festival. Yeah, but he's hiding from me. He's hiding. <laughs> He, 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 he gets into the crowd so nobody can see him. <laughs> it's a pastime, right, Mark? Are you coming to see me today? Sure. Mark Sorov is actually in U.S. <laughs> oh, you're in the U.S. Yes, the one that was your driver, Maharaj, remember? Oh, this is oh, this is another Sharab. Yes. <laughs> this is my driver in the US. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Uh, this is your disciple. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maharaj. I'm trying to serve these young men as a young devotee is not at all a disciple, Maharaj. I myself am trying to be a disciple. <laughs> Yes, okay. When Marsh comes, you can ask your question, Prakshit, my husband. Okay, go ahead. You can ask a question. Marsh can hear you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my whole obeisance. It's all good. So I'm asking a question on behalf of one of our bhaktas uh, who is watching on YouTube and wanted me to relate the question. So he texted me. So I'll read this question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. He said, the home of the basin is all going to share Prabhupada. How can we deal with the situation when half your family members are worshiping demigods and you yourself are on the path you know, Krishna worshiping Iskan? How do you deal with this, this situation? <laughs> the question that comes up all the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know if you can make them Krishna conscious, do it. <laughs> if you can, mm. just give them some prashadam. Mm. Okay. And Marsh, what if they interfere? Huh? Then what, what if the family interferes with the person who's trying to, to grow in Krishna consciousness? Then what should that person do? Leave home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, who's your real father? Mm. Mother, who's your real well worship? Family members are just arrangements for due to our previous karma, that's all. We get thrown together with people, and they, we call them family members. But actually, they're 
thieves and dacoits. <laughs> Well, well, you answered the thing. Frank okay. Pelton was talking about that this morning, and I was listening to him. He says, you work so hard, you come home, and your wife takes your paycheck. He's a thief. <laughs> your kids want all this and that, and they just pick your pocket. <laughs> Calling family members. Yeah, thank you. I, I, Who, who's your best well wisher? Krishna. Krishna, the spiritual master, the Vaishnava. Mm. Look, you look how many great souls had to leave their present material situation in order to actually become great souls. Many. And we think we're safe within the confines of family life, but it's a it's a false sense of safety. They can't protect you, nor can they, nor can they protect themselves. <laughs> If you can, make, you. you can make the family members Krishna conscious, or if they're favorable and don't interfere, you may go on. And if, they're, if they're trying to destroy your actual goal in life, which is your relationship with Krishna, they're your enemies. In the name of family members, they're enemies. <laughs> No Thank you, March. And March, can it also be a situation where it's very difficult for someone who's progressing, who's trying to progress in Krishna consciousness, where the family members are not supportive or worshiping demigods or whatever, that it can also be a situation to check ourselves how attached we are to our family and that's why we just can't leave home uh, what's that last sentence again that, um it it, it it is a test for us to see how attached we are to our family and can't leave home if we sincerely want to progress in krishna consciousness every every activity in in, in life is an opportunity to move forward or backward every moment so you might consider everything. Some are obviously come in the form of tests, and every and every and others come in a more subtle form. But life is about purification of the heart, coming to the stage of bhakti. So you can accept, you can you can define everything ever as a situation where you can go forward or backwards in your progress and devotional service. You can call it a test or you can just call it the way life is. <laughs> it's just so when you're with devotees, you can commit offenses and go down. If you're with devotees, you can serve them nicely and go up. It's a test. Hmm. Vidhavi, you, you had your question up, Mataji. Go ahead. Oh, no? Okay. <laughs> Took it down. Uh, the devotee that asked the question, I said thank you. Text me. Okay. Good. Thank you. So, uh, we were about 15 minutes over, right? Oh, yes. Marge, when, yeah, when, when we get questions that are so powerful, I we. I know I kind of lose track of time, so I apologize, Marge. No, and it's okay. It's okay. We, as long as there's questions. There's yeah, no... it's like a really, really powerful question. We'd like to ask devotees if you have any questions, any comments on this, you know, amazing topic that I'm sure we all go through in our daily activities, you know, personal life, working life. Please do um, share it. 
you can raise your hand or uh, you know put in the chat if you have any questions. And I'm gonna go down the list just to make sure that I don't miss anybody here. Okay, I think I have asked every answered everybody's question. Okay, Pritchard has his mic on. You want to say something? Just a comment, just a little okay. funny comment that this particular delivery made it says, Thank you, Maharaj. Problem solved. <laughs> it says the whole thing about leaving home. <laughs> That's a very important thing. Yeah, I guess that. There you go. There's, there's other homes that are much better. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's really nice. Thank you. If there are no questions or comments, then thank you for those of you who asked a powerful, powerful questions. We want to thank you all for all your questions and your takeaways and your realizations. And we want to thank Maharaj for always being so patient with us and answering all our questions. And Maharaj, thank you for a wonderful class. Patitanam Pavanavio, Vaishnavavio, Namo Namaha, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Have yeah. a wonderful day and thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Anasuya. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful way of, of conducting these programs. That's why I chose Tuesday and Thursday just to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, I'm just serving you, Maharaj, in any little way I can. I There's no magic to it, Maharaj. It's just by your mercy. I don't know whose mercy it is, but it's nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Mataji, what about asking Guru Maharaj to stand with us? I was told that um, I used to do that a lot. But I was told that um, she, Shrimati has to talk with Maharaj first because I think I was not supposed to do that. But then I don't know whether I should do that and I don't want to break any rules. So, Maharaj, you tell me. <laughs> what, did, what did she say? I, I no, because, uh, because she said that it was only me that was asking you to chant one Rana. And, and I remember you asking me this, I think, a couple of either you or someone else a couple oh. of years ago. And no one else does it in the class. So she thought it was our system in our temple. And I said, no, Maharaj mm -hmm. asked. So she was going to ask you because I may be doing things differently. And I said, okay, let me just keep my mouth zipped. <laughs> and, no, then she, okay. and, and she was going to talk to you about it. Yeah, you can see, the host can suggest that anything. Oh, it's okay. Whether I, I, something is waiting for me to happen right like, or not right immediately. If not, I'm always happy to share with the Lord. Maharaj, do you have any appointments coming up in the next 15 minutes? Only two. Oh, okay. <laughs> then. <laughs> okay, Maharaj, I'm sorry. We'll do it next not... Tuesday. I apologize. <laughs> but, it, but actually, it's in order to make the appointment even more qualitative. I think chanting around would be helpful for me. Okay, Marsh, we can do we a lot of chanting, yeah. Marsh. Yes, right. thank you, Shriti. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, uh, okay, I'm, just fortunately, I got my beads right here. Yeah. Yes. Andres. Protected by this con Harrisburg. Only by your mercy, Marsh. Thank you, Marsh. Thank you very much for your wonderful lecture and thank you for your time you spent with us. Thank you very much. Hare yeah. Krishna. Yeah. Hope you're well. Mm -mm. Not that. Okay, Tanya, Prabhu, Nityananda,